Hey everybody, welcome back to 13.2, and today we are going to tackle the first bit of DLC. Do you guys like gambling? Fuck yeah, I do. Well, good. That's extremely, very, really, massively... Pro that's incredibly fortunate. I can't, I can't tell you how lucky that, that, that is that you like gambling. Because otherwise we'd be a bit fucked. I love this DLC. Yeah, so we are doing Saz's DLC today, and it is called Heads or Tails. There is no combat, there is no real plot, there's really nothing of nothing of anything. Well, there is there is a there is a lot of one particular thing. There's a lot of there's a lot of gambling. A whole whole lot of gambling. I don't understand why like why they went with SARS for this. I mean okay, I mean I I guess no, no, I still don't. Well, you see, it's it's ironic because he's he's always so unlucky. You know, when he has, he has his kid get taken from him like every fucking time, and you know, didn't the entire cast of thirteen get horrifically fucked over at literally every turn because fate? Because Etro is a horrible, horrible god. Yes. Yeah, but she's dead now. We don't care anymore about that. Oh, we, do we think that just because she's dead means that we're not going to be dealing with the fallout from her tremendous fuck-ups? Etro dying isn't going to save us from her magnificent incompetence. Um, also... What? Stuck in this place it's like if you have a life support system in a hospital, and if you pull the plug, it blows the hospital up. Oh, because of what happened that day. I don't see how that's like this at all. I'm talking about the heart of Etro. Yeah, that's what Etro's situation was like. Routine flight, same old plane, same I guess. It's a gorgeous day. A well, I guess we get to hear Saz's theme again. Which is awesome. One of my favorite songs from the first game. One of a lot of people's favorite songs from the first game. Because it was it was like interesting and characterful and a little bit unlike everything else. Those are the kinds of things that people like about Final Fantasy soundtracks. Daddy? The interesting things that stick out. Yeah. Oh no, it's an emergency. I'm just reminded of uh, the movie Poltergeist. I, I, Dodge seems to have, have, have picked up the hey, I'm I'm going to become creepily prophetic. What is it with that thing that they do with kids who are like something's about to happen? Hey, you there? I mean, they almost could have had a point to it in thirteen when he had like bullshit magic cocoon powers. Wait, but... what? I can't hear you. I can't hear you over this noise. Oh hey, it's this guy. I remember this guy. Take a look at the coin. Doesn't he have the same he sounds like the same voice as uh Pecker from Jack 2 and 3? Hmm. Hmm. That is the situation you are in. There are two possibilities for your future. Life or death. Oh, I know this speech. Doesn't it end with some stupid metaphor about a cat in a box? No, 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 you're, that's the other cat metaphor. You're thinking of the entirely wrong thing. It is also possible. Oh, okay. This guy's still weird. Okay. So then which is it? That depends on you and your actions. That he's not only weird, he's obtuse. You must gamble and win the possibilities you wish to see manifest, whatever they may be. Oh my god, that hand is disgusting looking. <laughs> Yeah, so kind of fitting with the whole fucked up chronology thing that 13.2 is goes with. Uh, this guy is pretty much telling us how the world works in Serendipity. So basically, our goal is to get these things called fortune medals. And yeah, after, well, after we get enough of these fortune medals, we become so lucky that we can tell fate to go fuck itself, and then we just get the outcome we want. That's kind of awesome, actually. And I, a kind of interesting way of looking at luck. 
like a lot of things in Final Fantasy XIII, too, it's like it's like they had a brainstorm meeting to see if people could come up with some moderately nifty ideas for plot hooks, which they then did, and then handed them to a team of morons who went and fucked everything up in the execution. So here's here's a thought that we're going to hang on to for four videos before bringing it up again. Does anyone think that there's no way that they could possibly ruin the Chocobo chick for anyone? That's ridiculous. Everybody loves the Chocobo chick. There's nothing. There's nothing they could do to ruin it. I, what, what am I saying? It's not possible. They, they, I mean, he already went and attacked Saz. That we're already on a good start. Oh well. It's, it's almost it's almost as though they only made that thing to like try and drum up fan appeal in the first place. It was like one of the literal first things that we saw about 13, other than the one screenshot of lightning upside down with a combat menu that doesn't exist, was the picture of this guy and he has a chocobo chick in his hair. I remember seeing that and I was like, I was like, this is awesome. Yep, I'm pretty sure that was the intended effect. Probably one of the few things that they could go with at that point. I'm pretty sure the only other, like, black character, like, main character in Final Fantasy, the last one was Barrett, and I think he was the only other one. The only, like, main character. There have been a couple subs. Like, you know, like, um... Is it, is it a stretch to say that, that Raijin in, in 8 was black? No, I think that's pretty re pretty reasonable to say. Even, even if you grant that, there's still... Not a lot, and it's notable whenever one actually does manage to show up. So hey, in case you didn't pick it up from any of that needlessly obtuse plot shit, this is the DLC in which you will grind for money. I like that they uh, separate that from the rest of the game, because money basically has no use in the, in the rest of the game. Yeah, that's pretty much what, what we said about this. Is that the casino money is irritating because it's good for nothing. It's good for like literally one fragment and one weapon, and that's it. So yeah, if we talk to him to get started, he will give us ten thousand coins. And if you sounds like a lot. It can be depending on how but how much you buy in. Oh yeah, I love poker. Yeah, so we're gonna start off with a little poker. So is this like actually poker or is it like bullshit JRPG poker? No, this is like straight up Texas Hold'em. Okay, good. I got I got moderately interested when I when I played in um, Tales of Asperia. It's like, oh, you're gonna play poker? Is it like the video poker where you? No, the Tell Tales of Asperia poker is like some bullshit card game where you just draw some random cards and you're like, oh hey, you drew cards that were a pair. You win some money. That's all it is. You literally just draw, and it's literally that simple. You don't like... okay. Because I know they have video park poker, that's really popular, where basically they give you a hand, you choose what cards you want to hold, and then you draw a second set of cards, um, and whatever you get is going to be your result, and you pay out based on that. That's like a really popular thing in casinos. So, uh, one thing I want to quickly point out is that Saz has a bunch of really weird, like, facial animations. Did he just turn into a robot? Yeah, I was just about to ask, what the shit? Yeah, he has a- he had a metal mask on there? Oh, that's his poker face, I'm guessing. Oh, I- I, I see. He also has this, like, one where he's, like, got, like, these demon eyes, and there's, like, this purple aura coming off of him, and then there's one where he's on fire and shit. There's- what the hell even is that? That's despair, I guess. I don't fucking know. It it kind it kind of it kind of looks like somebody did a like internet image mashup of Sars and Benedict Cumberbatch. All right, so yeah. Anyway, that's poker. We don't give a fuck about poker. There's also slots, but you don't get fortune medals off of the slots, so fuck slots. Seriously, always fuck slots. Nobody ever likes socks. All right, so welcome to Chronobine. This is pretty much the best thing in this entire game. It's the best minigame in the entire fucking series, and I will fight anyone that says otherwise. It's actually incredible. I don't understand how, like, the team that made 
managed to make Chronobind. This is the game that I wanted Triple Triad to be. Well, you say that as though you say that as though Triple Triad wasn't incredible on its own. T Triple Triad was fucking garbage. Yeah, I don't like Triple Triad much either. It, Triple Triad would have been fine if they didn't have the stupid rules changing bullshit. It would have been it would have been fine, but it becomes too much of a hassle to actually play the damn game. Yeah. It's it's pretty it's pretty interesting, except for the fact that the AI is too good at it. Oh well, um we should probably talk about Chronobind. Yeah, okay, so basically, as you can see, everybody gets five cards, and then we get an initial card to start the clock. And at this point, everybody plays a card from their hand, or any number of cards, as long as they match. And then at that point, the highest card wins, and then you move the clock hand that many spaces, just like in the clock puzzles. You what? Yeah, like, this is a- it's literally, it's a clock puzzle. But, it's fun. And it's not NP hard. But anyway, yeah, so the way the game works is that the highest card wins and gets to move the clock unless you play the number the clock is currently on. That beats the high card. Unless you play an ace. The ace beats the... beats the, uh, that number beats the high card, essentially. What if the clock's on a one? Then the ace is the high card. I was mostly just saying that to, like, um, what is that? I believe aces also beat kings, but only if the king is played. It's a weird way of doing that. But yeah, anyway, that's, that's the gist of the game. And then every time a card is played, they put a chip on that number on the board. And the number of chips on a number will tell you how many stacks you get from everybody else. So, and the payouts are off on the side there, so you can see how much you would win. Right, so, so yeah, everyone, everyone's got you know however many stacks of however many coins, and you get that many stacks from each player based on the number of on the clock that you land on if you win. Yes. And hence, you can rack up the huge multipliers and make the huge profits. Oh yeah, this it's this game is so great for making coins. It's amazing. Yeah, especially when you play high, higher stakes. Yeah, it, and it should be pointed out that uh, these coins do carry over to Sarah and Noel, so you can make mad profit off of this. Yeah, in, in as much as mad profit in the casino is good for anything. You can buy decoration. You can buy a bunch of decorations to put on your monsters, and that's fine by me. Yeah. So yeah, this little girl damn minigame, it's like, it's everything that pretty much every other aspect of Final Fantasy XIII 2 is not. Like, it's kind of immediately engaging, it's a little bit actually strategic, it's quite profitable to pursue, it has some depth, it's fun to just play. Like, come on, where the hell were the people who made this for the entire rest of the development period of this game? What were they doing, and why was nobody consulting them? Were they working on unfucking uh, Final Fantasy XIV at the time? That's a distinct possibility. Well, maybe... I don't know. I'd, I'd like to say that though they were entirely different teams, because that's what a sane developer would do, but, you know, a sane developer wouldn't have gotten themselves in the Final Fantasy XIV quandary in the first place. So, I guess you can't really use that logic. Hey, that, that was all of the tens. Yeah, so you... well, the, there, to be fair, the three was already a four. There was no way anyone was going to pass that up. But yeah, to make a long story short, the only other rules regarding the game is that if two of the same card is played, and they are the winning card, then nothing happens, but you charge the clock and everybody's stacks get bigger. So that's a thing. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta fund the stacks with your own coins, but... Oh, uh, somebody is getting paid. Yeah, the point is that, um, un unlike all, all this other stuff where everyone pays like tiny little bits into one pot that gets bigger and bigger, in this you're always winning a whole lot from everyone all at the time, all at the same time. So 
the stacks get bigger and bigger and the multipliers get higher and higher and there's just a whole bunch of numbers being multiplied together and they all just keep going up. And the longer the game goes on, the higher the stakes get. It's not like you you establish one thing of stakes and then you play it for a very long time to get them. Yeah, that's one thing I really like about the the game is you the even if, although it's not a multiplayer game, it's just a single player game. There's a lot of pressure to decide: do you do I want to clock out now, or do I want to keep going and potentially lose everything? It is a shame that there is no multiplayer version of this. Oh my god! If there was a multiplayer version of this, that's all I would ever play. I would I would literally just buy a standalone game. I would not. I would buy a standalone game with that. There's there's so much potential for like the uh, standalone versions of stupid Final Fantasy mini games. I'm pretty sure they've they've been done on several accounts. I mean, I, don't, I know we've got like the there's Triple Triad in the Portal app now, so that's a thing. Although I hear that has its own range of bullshit thing, but well, I think most of the most of them are probably inherent to the fact that it is Triple Triad. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know, I, I, you know, I can't actually recall off the top of my head what the common complaint about it was, but there was there was something that wasn't like a regular triple triad thing. It's something to do with the way that actually trading cards works, but you know, I, I, I digress. The point is, there's a bunch of stuff that would make great like little standalone games. Yeah, like my, my favourite example to go to is Blitzball. It was a really cool idea. I I want to like Blitzball. I like the idea of Blitzball. I want to play the game that Blitzball thinks that it is. But there is no real way around the fact that the thing in Final Fantasy X is fucking shit and kind of sucks and is a chore to deal with. So it's it, 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 Blitzball is one of those either love it or hate it things. There is no in between. And then they changed it in Ten Two to be like a manager type deal, which I like the idea, but it's not my thing. Again, that was like that was a kind of a similar thing where you know they had they had this idea that it's, it seems like a likable thing, but they utterly fucked it up. I I would I would legit be interested in like Blitzball Manager combined with you know something like a sports game where you play Blitzball instead of a real sport. Why the hell not? They had Chocobo Racing. Yeah, they made they made they, well, they had an entire spin-off from that. The Chocobo there was an entire Chocobo series now. Yeah, Chocobo's Dungeon. I remember that was a thing. I somewhat forget what's become of that, but you know, it was interesting that it happened in the first place. I think Chocobo Dungeon got like it got a DS game, and I think that's the last I've ever seen of it. Yeah, literally the only thing I know about the DS Chocobo Dungeon game is that it had like a solid yellow box art with Chocobo eyes drawn on it. That's actually kind of cool. I like that. That's a nice design decision. Yeah, I'm pretty sure there was there was a, there was a Sonic game that had that. I don't know if it was a game, but there was something Sonic related that was just it was solid blue and it had the eyes on it, and it was a really cool design, and they've never gone with anything like it. I thought that was Sonic CD, if I remember right. Oh, it was it was the the basic idea of it. They had a they had a character design that was like a silhouette with eyes. The main the main thing on Sonic and Knuckles looked like that as well. It looked actually classy. It's kind of kind of depressing to like to see how well that works contrasted with how Sonic's doing these days. Sonic Generations was good. True, and look how much they're capitalizing on that. Yeah, not at all. I mean, they after yeah, you know, hot on the success of Sonic Generations, they went and made Sonic Boom. So you know, uh huh? Oh, this game has gone on. Yeah, usually it. I usually I usually go on for a while, but this one. Yeah, and of course, the stakes just go up and up and up. Yeah, it ends basically whenever uh, somebody can't bet anymore. Yeah, you can. Yeah, you can drain people out. Anyway, after uh, clearing each thing, we get a, we get some fortune medals based on some stuff. Like, there's one for each victory with an ace, and one for every high level bind, and you know, a bunch of shit like that. Let's keep playing. 
More Chrono Bind. More Chrono Bind. More! Preferably with marginally higher numbers. I think the only way this would be uh, even more extreme is if they actually played the Crazy Chocobo theme, but I think that even I think that would actually start to take away from it. I don't know. You can I, I know from experience that you can loop that for quite a while before it stops even before it stops being novel, let alone before it stops being interesting. No, unfortunately, they only play this one song, and this this song I don't remember what I don't remember exactly what it is off the top of my head. It's one of the battle themes. Yeah, it's uh, I think it's the standard battle theme. They they have dumb generic names. There's a lot of standard battle themes in this. That's something I like, like literally, a literally unambiguously no downside like about this game is that there are there are a bunch of different battle themes. I think it's like one of the first one one of the first like normal fight battle themes you hear though that isn't like in like cutscene or in event or something like that but yeah anyway um yeah like i said i like this song but this song plays is it i recorded about an hour and hour and a half of this or give or take and uh that is too much of this song do you know what you can do with crazy chocobo is I, I forget which fragment series it is, but one of the one of the fragment artifact, well, one of one of the like the the menu skills that you can get is you can choose what music plays when you're riding a chocobo, and you, so you can make it so that it yeah. So normally, crazy chocobo only plays when you're riding one of the asshole ones who eats all of your greens, but you can make it play on any chocobo. And if you're a person that hates fun and good things, you can change the Crazy Chocobo theme to the normal one. Yeah, you can also make Crazy Chocobo never play. I was gonna say, what kind of monster would do that, though? Also, I kind, I kind of have to, I kind of have to respect that in Lightning Returns, there is exactly one reprise of Crazy Chocobo. It plays once in the entire game. And I think it would have been remarkably easy to not do that. Yeah, well, the scene that it plays on is... Yeah, I know nothing about it, so uh, that's something I want to save for... to discover for myself when I watch the LP or actually play it. There are, there are more monumental spoilers, but that doesn't mean it wouldn't be cruel to ruin it. Let's, let's just not say anything more about Lightning Returns. Other than that, it's great, and I like it a lot. I can say that, right? Yeah. That's just like your opinion, man. Do you think do you think it's gonna be gonna be weird going through an LP as a Final Fantasy 13 game with me as the enthusiastic one? It's going to be a tonal shift for sure. I don't know, I, I don't know I don't know if people would be more relieved than otherwise. Oh well. I'm sure the thread will say, because they love giving opinions on, on people's tone throughout, throughout an LP. Oh lord, do they ever. The robot face on Sars looks really jarring every time I see it, and I'm trying to place what it is. Yeah, I want to say it's like the, a literal interpretation of like a poker face. It, it, looks, it looks very falsy -y. It looks like a mask more than like a robot face to me. I could see arguments for both, but it for me it looks like a it looks like a robot face. I'm stu I love the wait, hang on, I love the smile. There's saw this Hollywood smile there. It's not it's not just like a single sparkle. His literally his entire mouth shimmers. No, see it totally is. You can see like his ears behind it. Oh yeah, that's right. Uh, uh, I, I still, I still like the falsy. Maybe it's a falsy mask. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm not saying it can't be a mask. I'm just saying it looks falsy. E. It can be both. There's a Saz uh, becoming evil or something. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know what the deal is with that one. Is that supposed to be like the the gambling spirit taking over, or like? I don't know if, it, if it's like if it's like angry energy or like happy energy. I mean, I do know that whenever that plays, that's usually 
like that animation usually comes up when you have the possibility of getting a big win. Isn't that true most of the time in Chrono Bind? Right, but it's like specifically, it's like if you have a card in your hand that will get you to like a triple bind or a full bind, he will suddenly go into the demon phase. I'm gonna go on a somewhat related tangent here. Um, there is a amazing uh, manga slash anime called uh, Kaiji, and it's about base. It's about gambling. It's it's hilarious. I know where this is going, and I'm in full approval. Um, one of the uh, it basically places this guy in really ridiculous situations to pay off of it, pay off his debt. Like in the first season. It involves him uh, going on a cruise ship with other people in debt, and basically you have to gamble your way out of debt. And it involves rock, paper, scissors. Needless to say, not everybody involves gambles their way out of the debt. Yeah, it's it involves rock, paper, scissors, but with cards. Restricted rock, paper, scissors. This is very important. You you have a certain number of paper, rock, and scissors cards which you, which you play, and it. It's just so... It's a very unique art style, is, is what I really like about it. It's it's really good. Also, everyone... Uh, there's, a, there's a counter that shows, like, above the whole room that everyone can see that shows the total number of each card that's still in play. And it's, like, actually moderately... kind of really fascinating. But mostly, Kaiji is a show about one guy's incredible gambits in which he will pull off some kind of spectacular gambling move and then he will like basically gloat for about 10 consecutive minutes about how he totally read what the other guy was going to do and how he's really amazing. And then like an episode later he ends up getting fucked by something else. Yeah, and despite how clever he is, he still ends up further in debt. Because they have to they have to keep the show going somehow. Well, yeah, the in, at the end of the first season, he ends up in debt again because in one of his gambling gambits, he cut off his own ear, and the surgery cost put him in debt again. Yeah, this, this is this is uh, this is the level that we're dealing with here. Yeah, it's pretty great. I remember I saw that show. I basically marathoned the whole thing because I was so into the concept. It was really good. There's like a bunch of. Uh, the manga goes on way longer than the anime does, uh, and there's actually a couple live-action movies. Yeah, I've I've seen I've seen the live-action kaiji. It's something. The best part, honestly, the best part of any live-action anime movie is usually the very unglorious insertion of English swear words. Ah. Uh. Yeah, there's there's a couple there's a couple tropes in Japanese things that never get old, and gratuitous English is one of them. Just to hear somebody talking in Japanese and all of a sudden going "fuck you" at the top of their lungs, it's just it's such a nice juxtaposition. There, I I don't I don't think they're ever gonna top the son of a bitch from Steins Gate. Ever, it's not gonna happen. Can we talk about, like, really, really bad 80s anime dubs? Because those are something special. I don't I don't doubt it, but I don't know much about those. Yeah, unfortunately, I can't really contribute much to that conversation. I can imagine, but... Yeah, it's really bad. We're talking, like... We're talking PS1-era voice acting bad. <sighs> Man, I'd forgotten that the PS1-era even had voice acting, and that's probably because it was repressed. The TurboGrafx-16 had voice acting on some of its games. Yeah, for, for certain values of voice acting, yeah. Like, there were SNES and Genesis games that had tiny, tiny, tiny voice clips in them. Well, they had, like, there were, like, actual... Well, it's not FMV, but, um, like, actual, like, cutscenes in, in the TurboGrafx games, because at that point the storage was getting big enough they could put it in. It was, like, really bad quality, but it was actual voice acting. Yeah, you could not do that on the SNES. All of the, all of the SNES games that had voice acting were able to do it just because they were able to, like, load basically whatever the hell sounds they wanted into the sampler. Yeah, because the SNES sound trip was amazing. 
I mean, this is the amount of shit they were able to get away with, even in... Oh, wait, Fiery Saz. Oh, this is new. Fiery Saz is all about taking home the gold. Is it is is it because he's on fire? Like, figuratively and literally? Oh, yeah. Well, that makes a surprising amount of sense, really. Numbers going up. Oh, man. It's so satisfying. So, yeah, as you can see, we have already doubled our uh, coin totals from, like, just that one session. And, we're, and we weren't even playing at the highest stakes. Right, so, I mean, imagine if I was playing with, like, 10,000 or 100,000 coin buy-ins. How may I this is this is a part of the game that actually gets the number balance progression somewhat right. Anyway, we can go over and talk to the owner, and he'll tell us about how we're doing and whether or not. Yeah, if you ask him where your son is, then uh, he'll give you some vague bullshit. Yeah, it's like he he's he starts with like that depends on you. Yeah, he gives you some bullshit answer that's like. Unfortunately, the future is too difficult to see right now. And then... And it'll... It's it said... It, like, when... Like, just before, it'll be like... You know, I, I can see that the tides are... You know, some... some it's It'll tell you, but it's really dumb. Yeah, it, it gives you a vague sense of... Okay, I am getting closer, but we're not done yet. I want to say you need 30 at the end? I honestly don't know, because I was too busy enjoying Chronobine to care. Yeah, he's like, I want to say the number's right around 30 that you need to finish the game. Yeah, I guess it does, it, it, it doesn't actually make it very obvious what you're actually working towards up and then you just have to keep on winning at gambling. And to be fair, that's totally reasonable. Yeah, Chrono Bind is the kind of game that you can just play and play and play and then you're like, oh hey, I guess I won, but I don't care, I'm going to keep playing Chrono Bind because guess what, it's actually fun. It's the most fun I've had playing uh, Square slash Square Enix minigame since, like, Chocobo Hot and Cold. Oh boy. I love Chocobo Hot and Cold. It, scra it scratches a very basic itch. Yeah, it's, like, it's actually kind of astounding how enjoyable that managed to be for how incredibly basic it was. I mean, it's really not very complicated, or like even on the face of it, not really very interesting at all. And yet, somehow, somehow, it's the thrill of the treasure hunt. And it did have a little bit of like of random number generated numbers going down. I think what what did it was the 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 little the tiny mini game when you hit treasure and you and you have to dig and you can mash the thing and make the number go down. And there's a little bit random. And you can make them out by which you dig per button mash, go up a little bit at a time. It's a very, very, very low level psychology thing. But something about the numbers in that game is fundamentally satisfying. So, Ar Artix, do you have like any general strategy on how you play the game? Do you tend to go for small wins, big wins, or just kind of go with the flow? Uh, what I usually do is I go for like a couple small wins at the start to get in the black, and then after that point I try to go for the big ones, which is huge. And my strategy for that is usually at the start of the game just put put as many coins on the board as you can. Like, even when you have no chance of actually, like, winning the hand, it doesn't matter. Put down those three fours, because that gives you a- Get the multiplier cranked up. Otherwise, what even is the point? And then, yeah, yeah. But yeah, that, that's pretty much what I do. And then, what I'll do is I'll keep an eye out and I'll try to hit anything. Like, unless I have, like, a guaranteed win in my hand. Like, like if there's, like, if I have, like, two kings and there's all- And I can get, like, a du free double bind out of that, I'll, I'll do that. Yeah. One nice thing about um, the game, and it doesn't really tell you, but it's a nice added layer of uh, depth, is that it actually does tell you what cards have been played if you actually look at the coins around the table. Wait, what? Oh, right, yeah, because there's a, there's a record of... Yeah, I, I never considered that. So you can calculate if something is a guaranteed win or not. Yeah, because you can, you can know the exact... It's like it, yeah. I had never considered that. 
But damn, that's completely correct. But see, that would be a good play because, you know, what's the odds of someone having another six in their hand? I actually got fucked on that because the six was the starting card. So it was like, okay, that was the starting card and three sixes. It's got to be all of them. And then it was like, nope, I got another six, motherfucker. And I got screwed out of my out of the wind there. Yeah, the starting card doesn't go away. Kind of, kind of reminds me of Liar's Dice. And if you actually played Liar's Dice? No, I don't believe so. I've played a couple dice games, but not that one. It's a, it's a, like surprisingly fun to just play, not even for stakes, just play to be the one asshole who manages to beat everyone. Because it's go, it goes off a similar kind of thing for this. Is like the the further you get into the game, and the better you're doing, the more possible it becomes to like massively influence the odds of the outcome because you get access to more and more information relative to everyone else is you know I, I i i imagine that this won't be immediately obvious to anyone who hasn't actually played but the very basic version is at the start of the game everyone has access to the exact same amount of information because everyone has five dice and you can look at your own dice and you can't look at the other player's dice but when you lose, you lose dice, they all just go into the pile. The objective is to be the last one left with dice. So the more dice you have relative to everyone else, the more the, the, the more relative information you have. It's a little it's a little thing, but it's pretty much what makes it fun. Also there was that time when it when it was in it was in Pirates of the Caribbean. It's how pretty much how basically anyone ever knows about it. Yeah, I've heard the name before, but I could never really place it. I think it was in one of the Assassin's Creeds as well, but I couldn't tell you. I only played the first one. Hopefully four. No, I've only played the, fir the first Assassin's Creed. Yeah, I, I mean, I, ho I hope that four is the one with live dice. It would be fitting, because pirates. It sounds right. It sounds about right. Because I couldn't really see it uh, in, like, any of the two, one or two, or any of those. Yeah, well, yeah. They, they, tend, they tended to go for games that were popular at the time. I don't know if, if Liar's Dice was actually a product of that period, but if it was, I guess it would be in four. But I could actually see Chronobind, like, if... Square put like promotion behind it. I could see this pl being played competitively because they have Texas Hold'em competitive play. Well, that that was like you know they they literally just took a, a game that existed and put it in Final Fantasy Thirteen. But this is they actually made what is, is as far as I can tell a completely new game. Yeah, I could see this being played competitively. Yeah, this this would be amazing if this actually like existed in real life. I would fucking play that all the time. Some I guarantee somebody somewhere on the internet has has made a actual chronobind. If not a table, then like a kit. I'm sure it's not hard to do. You need coins. You need coins. A deck of cards and a modified roulette wheel. Or, like, one of those spinners from some board game. Yeah. Like I said, it would, wouldn't, be, wouldn't be technically very difficult to put one together. I yeah, can almost guarantee someone on the internet has done it. Somebody will probably find it about 30 seconds after this video goes up. Somebody will have skipped to the exact point in this video where I say that, and they'll go, I know! And post it in the thread. I say that person is a good person, whoever you are. We appreciate your hypothetical work. All right, how are we doing? Well, it, we appear to have doubled what we started with in this game. Like, do do the other players get like actually knocked out? They run out of money. It, once one person runs out of money, the game's over. So there, there is a there is a theoretical maximum. So the amount you can win from a single game. You basically have to run the table on absolutely every game. 
to get the theoretical maximum. You would not, if you lose a game, you basically lose out on money. I was, I was trying to get a sense of the numbers on this. But yeah, I guess it would be, it'd be pretty difficult to, like, completely knock everyone out. But it would go that way eventually. I'm not sure if it ends if somebody can't bet anymore, or if the if it just ends at the end of the round. I'm not sure. Oh. Okay, I guess if there's like, I guess technically there's a finite number of cards. Like, unless unless they do something sneaky, like you know, the the cards will go back in the deck. I've never gotten that far to find out. I don't think it's even possible. Wait, you mean like on a per hand basis or what? Because like. If, if the deck runs out of cards, because there's only one deck, it's only the 52 cards. If the deck runs out, the, everything, every th all of your stacks get reset, and the game basically starts over. But all of the ch but all of the chips that you've played, like on the clock, they are still in play in the pool. That is interesting, but I've never gotten to that point. Yeah, yeah it seems like you kind of have to very deliberately game a game. To even reach that point, it's easier than it than you would think, but it is. It does take a bit of finesse to get to get that far in. Yeah, especially with the AI, because one of the things about the AI in this game is that each like actual NPC, you know, has like a distinct strategy. I was gonna ask about this. Yeah, some of them, like some people. Yeah, like Elvis, for example, just gonna put a pick on him because I know I know his tendencies. He is a very big, big win or nothing person. So like some people would usually clock out on a double if they had a double available to them. Elvis will not. Elvis will only hit triple or full lines. So that means that you can totally cash in on his tendency to try and cash in on you. Yeah. And I'm assuming that's why I like it with uh you know, if we were able to play this multiplayer, is that each person has a different strategy on how to play. Come on, Square Enix. Take our money. Anyway, we're going to take a recording break, and we will be right back. And we are back. So, you know, whenever there's any awkward downtime in this video, somebody is going to quote the Twitter account, FF13Fanfics. I'll, I'll definitely uh, be the... I'll definitely be the first one to do that. Um, let's start with, uh, let's start with this one. Fang smokes some dank kush and then realize she is the dank kush. <laughs> oh, hi, I'm here as well. Hi. Yeah, in our recording break, someone else turned up. Hi, I'm Blastinus again. This, this entire thing is basically a podcast anyway. Yeah, so you ready to play some sweet cards, Blast? Darn right I am. Cards and clocks. Don't forget the clock. The clock is very important to this game. Explosions and clocks. Man, if you'd have told me before this came out that the single best part of Final Fantasy XIII II was going to involve a clock, I'd have punched you. Well, this game's all about time travel, right? Yeah. I mean, I guess technically that's true. I mean, by the pro process of just clocks showing up everywhere, the good thing involving clocks would have would have showed up eventually. That's actually not- that's actually a pretty good point. I mean, given how much of this game is about clocks, statistically speaking, the good thing probably would have had to have been about a clock. Uh, I don't know. I mean, clocks don't always show up in stuff about time travel. It's just... Yeah. So, so you play two fours there. Explain why you play two fours. Because you can. Yes, because I can. Also, because playing two fours means that I get to put two chips on the board, and two chips mean that if we hit that, you get a bigger payout. We did tell you beforehand that this game involves a lot of numbers that all independently go up. So one of the numbers that can go up is the number of chips on each part of the clock. Which basically gives you a multiplier, so if you win while it's on a space that has a multiplier, you win more, because it's a multiplier, and that's what multipliers do. Uh, Saz? You wanna tell us something here? Saz is actually one with the spirit of gambling. It's a great demon of his that we don't talk about. 
this is all working theory anyway. So I'm gonna start quoting some more things from this amazing account. Please do. It was Lightning's birthday for the first time in a thousand... No, wait, no, the, no I'll tell that one later. Okay, Lightning steps out of the train leading to the new world and realizes she hasn't taken a shit in a thousand years. Uh-huh. It was Yule's first day in the new world. She poops and dies. Lovely. I think I'm detecting a pattern here. Are you? Well, let me tell you, Blast. Caius could no longer look at spaghetti without thinking of that night. Yule looked at spaghetti and died. <laughs> Yule logs onto Tumblr and goes into the Naruto tag. She dies seconds later. I'm trying to actually figure out how this game works. So a king just rota ro rotates you back to where you started? Yes, because the king is 13. And since there are 13 spaces on the clock, if you win with a 13, you have to go back to where you started. Which is a pretty good strategy. Um, you usually save your kings. So, back to the fanfiction. Lightning went to bed. Wake me when Final Fantasy VII gets a remake. Lightning slept for the rest of her life. Posted December 6th, 2014. I was gonna say, that one's out of date! Definitely dated. Oh hey! Actual important thing, like I said. Yeah, the deck runs out, so all the coins that are still on the clock, they're still, they're still in the pot. But otherwise, the game starts over. Oh, nice. But all the multipliers go away as well. Unfortunately, yes. So that's, that's the one aspect of this game where the stakes can actually go down as the game goes on. I'm not sure how I feel about that. Sort of. Kind of. Because if the pot stays the same, the multiplier... As the game goes on, the multiplier is just going to make it even bigger. You've got to win to get the lot. Not win. You got to get the multipliers back up, and it's generally more profitable to just win before the deck runs out, and then just play another hand than it is to win by gradually ramping up the pot and then winning on a high multiplier. Man, why couldn't this entire game be about Chrono Bind? Right, because it was DLC, and yeah, maybe that, that's actually a surprisingly cynical idea that I like. That maybe they did come up with this game while also, you know, working on everything else in 13.2. And they're like, oh, what's the thing that we should cut for DLC? Let's take the one actual really, really good minigame in here. It got me to buy it, so. Someone was bored and made a really awesome card game. They do have a thing for making surprisingly good card games. And, and sometimes, um, Bejeweled Clones, like, does any- actually, does anyone actually remember that- that game? Like, something about Geomancy? The what now? No. Like, there's- there, there, there's this one sort of weird Bejeweled uh, meets RPG thing. Oh, um, Puzzle Quest. Oh, yes, yes, Puzzle Quest. No, not Puzzle Quest. I'm sure someone in the thread will back me up on this. Like, there is an actual thing that exists that, we'll ha that I, ha I have to look up when this video's over. I don't know, when when you talk about Bejeweled and RPG, I just immediately think Puzzle Quest. Yeah, I don't know what else you could possibly be talking about. Alright, here's another one. Noel had finally fallen asleep. This was her chance. Sarah's cat peed on Noel's parachute pants and ran away into the sunset. Well, he deserves that one. Sarah walked in to find her sister playing Kingdom Hearts 2. No, light, like, that's the game that turns you into a weeaboo. <laughs> <laughs> Where the fuck is this music coming from? Vanille wonders as she makes her way around some left waterscape. Trogolino was in a McDonald's drive-thru. Give me my children back! The employees didn't know what to do, so they threw chicken at her. <laughs> <laughs> Lightning's internet was down again. She looked out of the window and questioned life as a tear rolled down her cheek. Lightning was enjoying life in the new world. Suddenly she came across a pizza hut. Hello, old friend. That can't really be healthy for Saz right now. 
Yeah, he appears to be um, charged. Not in a good way either. It's okay. No, 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 no. That's the kind of charge that gives that puts you in intensive care. I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe he just cast End Thunder on himself. I mean, yeah, he is a synergist. He can do that. That is that is basically what he does. I see. So he's going to headbutt people with lightning. Caius stares at a crystallized lightning with a smirk on his face. Caius whispers, I'm a bad bitch, and walks away <laughs> fabulously. Yule stepped outside. There was still too much water, so she died. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on! Hope could feel himself turning to crystal. He farted as it was happening. He looked behind him to see, find his fart was now crystal also. There's some that I want to read, but I'm just like, I really don't want to hear those words coming out of my mouth. Also, you should probably not read, out, read any of them that are talk about Lightning Returns, but, you know. Other than that, you get totally free reign. Kamiya had finally blocked Lightning. Senpai finally noticed her. She cried. Moms are tough, Nora says, as she slips the Annihilator XXL dildo into her vagina. <laughs> Yeah, he said I had free reign, man. Well, I mean, if that's where we're going with this... It's a good joke. I... I don't know if that is where we're going with this. It, it's not. It's not. We're gonna, we're gonna nix that one. Yeah. I'd rather that we didn't go that way. Uh, needless to say, there are a lot of those. We are, shall we say, curating this account. Nice gun, Lightning said to the Psycom Warden. The Warden blushed. He finally found a bay. Toriyama climbs out of Lightning's toilet. My waifu. <laughs> How is that a fanfiction? That probably actually happened. You know, it seems like no matter how many duels you lose, you always seem to get money while everyone else loses money. That's because I'm the best at this. Make all the mad cash. Yeah, also you can like deliberately win on multipliers, so you can win more when you win than they win when you lose. Also, like this, just the way this game works, it's kind of balanced towards if one person wins slightly more often, they profit massively more because Whenever, whenever you win, you gain a lot, but when you lose, you only lose a little. Yeah, right, so like, one of our stacks might be worth like 15 coins, and I might get three stacks from everybody, so that everybody only loses like 45 coins, but I actually get like 150. Yeah, multipliers. Because the times one is actually what people put down on the table. And then multipliers don't actually take out of the other people's funds. Did the music just go weird for anyone else? Yeah. Was I imagining that? Well, now that you mention it, I have to leave it in. I was gonna dub over this stuff with, like, other music, but... No, I was like... I, I, thought, I, I thought I was either going crazy or my computer was being weird. But yeah, yes, that was in the video. Yeah, my laptop has a tendency to go a little bit weird if I bump it by accident, so... I kind of just figured that was that happening. Figured I figured I'd ask. No, that actually was in the video, and now I can't dub over it with other stuff because now we're gonna look like idiots talking over it. Well, you say that as though we're not gonna look like idiots talking over whatever anyway. I mean, what what are we now if not idiots talking over Chronobind? Yeah. And um, yeah, as we've just been reminded, we are literally reading the output of the Twitter account FF13 Fanpix to pass the time. You know, anticipation's all nice and good, but I'd rather I actually have money too, Wilma. Yule stand at a, stared at a flower in awe. I love nature. Kaya stared at her like she was all in all the crack on the planet. It's CGI, you dumbass. Wait, Yule didn't die this time? Yeah, seriously, what the hell? It's variety. Abs were taking over the world. Lightning has 13 days to invent ad block.
Hope stares in shock as Lightning summons Odin and continues to ride on him. I didn't know Light was a brony. Lightning looked up at the church. 13 days to save the world from bronies. Hmm. So, now what? So now we, uh... Well, first of all, we check out this baller menu screen. Hell yeah. I, I like I like that it that it tells us about his name just in case we've forgotten what his name is. Yeah. Anyway, I was just quickly checking my uh my fortune medals to see how many I had. You not only have all of the fortune medals, you also have the entire combined inventory of Sarah and Noel. But yeah, here's here's what we mean by him just giving a vague, I guess you're kind of close bullshit answer. So we have to gamble in order to get our son back. Yes, the premise of this DLC is that we're going to win fortune medals, which will make us luckier. And then eventually we will be so lucky that we can tell fate to go fuck itself, and then we'll just get... And then we'll just get whatever outcome we want. Oh, wait, higher stakes. Oh yeah, no, now we're going to the big money. Oh, about time. And it immediately gets a king. Oh, wow, well, it doesn't do anything? Not, not on the uh, opening card, no. Lame. It was Yule's, it was Yule's, 8649-8647567-853-64-64546 funeral. Crazy Chocobo starts to play. <laughs> Perfect. I'm from Grand Pulse, Fang told the pink-haired woman. Then why do you sound Australian? Yule died of explosive diarrhea again. Caius looked up at the sky. FML. Light stopped walking and thought for a moment. Is there anyone in my party I haven't punched yet? Yule had another glimpse into the future. Final Fantasy XV was still not released yet. It's true. It's so true. And what do you want for Christmas, Santa asked Yule. I want to stop dying all the time. Santa kills Yule. Ho ho ho. Eh. Sarah looked at Snow and Light angrily. You bitches with your anime and mangoes. Caius was dying. Lightning. I'm dying. Light looked down at him and smiled. What the fuck ever? Oh, I have an actual question about Chronobind. Okay. Okay. Do, 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 like, do the other people who play with you change at the different stakes? Are there different people playing super high stakes Chronobind? No, I think it's what it actually is is just you get a random selection of people every time you, every time you open and start playing around. I haven't really paid enough attention. I just know there's this one guy with glasses, and he's an asshole. He's actually he's actually a threat. Yeah, that guy is a fucker. I hate him. So there are actually certain players. Yeah, the, all the all the different players actually have quote unquote personalities and playing styles. <laughs> oh wait, okay. I got. I think I have the best one. It was Yule's funeral again. Caius pressed F to pay respects. Oh wait, no, no, no. I think I get out. Get, get how this game works now. You have. Yeah. Well, you don't. You don't just say that and not follow it up. Yeah. The idea is that you keep on going around to build up charge, and then. When, when you're the uh, when you're the winner, you clock out, and then you earn whatever whatever charge multiplier is there on the right. So in this case, we got a times three, and we got a triple bind. Yep, very good. You figured it out. But of course, you can also choose to not do that on the chance that you might be able to get a quad bind or something. But of course, that means that you have to pass up on winning right now. And why would you ever do that? You end up just making a lot of money at this anyway. There is a point where the difficulty curve in this just kind of starts going iffy. But it takes a lot longer than most things involving a difficulty curve in this game, so... Hmm. It would be interesting to have, like, AI that 
that changed. But that would be a little bit too much effort for, honestly, a really fun DLC to begin with. Also, it would be too much effort for anything involving this game to begin with. Yeah, fair enough. So it would be proper if there, if all the effort went into making the, you know, the dumb gambling mini game. Yule is alive. Wait, I was hacked. She's fucking dead. Fang and Vanille awoke from their 1,000 year long nap. Fang looked up. Fucking hell, One Piece still hasn't finished yet. No, Yule, you cannot change your name to Dead Bitch 420, Caius told the girl. <laughs> <laughs> so where does this Twitter feed get all of these quotes from? I think I think this person just writes them. I wouldn't be surprised if half of them are from actually from fanfiction either. Hope finally summoned his idol and Kanye West. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So now they, the high card last time was a ten. So does that matter at all? Well, it means that there's that many less tens in the deck now. Yeah, what the what the high card is affects well, obviously how many things that the hand can move. Also, what cards were played affects what coins go on the clock and where. What happens if you manage to uh, cash out the other players? The game just ends, yeah, you, and you have to start over. Oh, you so you don't get, like, a cash bonus? No, but you probably get a fortune medal bonus for cashing out the other person. Notice that we have made, like, as much profit in this one game as we have in the entire of the videos up to this point. Yeah, when you start, that's what multipliers do. That's what, that's what playing at ten times the stakes does. And again, this is all going to waste because casino coins don't fucking matter. But you know. Yeah, it seems like this would be a good, like, grinding DLC. If, if grinding DLCs are actually considered a good thing in any in any circumstance. But, come on, we're, we're gambling here. Why don't you just uh, say, okay, your money from the base game goes into here and you can uh, gamble in order to get huge amounts of money for the base game. You can. You can? I think once you finish the DLC, yeah. Yeah, these casino coins will go back to Sarah and Noel. Ooh. Like, which, again, the caveat is, casino coins don't fucking matter. They matter for, like, literally two things, unless you want to buy every single adornment. Which is a worthwhile- well, I wouldn't say worthwhile, it's, a, it's one hell of an endeavor, I'll give it that. Look, I want to put a, I want to put a silly hat on my mon, okay? There's nothing wrong with that. Ugh. You foolish child, Bunavelza said as he turned around. His face turned into Nick Cage. Light stared in horror. Nope, I'm fucking out. <laughs> <laughs> and what do you want for Christmas, Santa asked. Haven't we had this one already? Yeah, we did this one. Yeah, we did that one. Come on, man. We totally did, man. It's still good. I think I think what's happened is is some of us is, is that some of us have been reading from opposite ends of this timeline and we've converged. <laughs> if you change the future, you change the past! Wait, that's not a fanfic. No, that's what happened. That, yeah, that's what happened. We Yeah, we changed the future, and now... And now he's gonna edit out wh whoever read it first. To change the past. Are you suggesting that I have almighty powers over the timeline? Yes. If, if by the timeline you mean, you mean fixing it in post. I don't know, is it that absurd a notion? It's true, I, I am Caius, it's true. Oh, if you're Caius, then who's Yule? You're Yule. Why am I Yule? Because you keep dying of disgust. No, I don't, I just keep being really disgusted. Or, you know, uninterested. How do I know that you're not the, the 70th incarnation of the duel? I mean, to be honest, this game is kind of stupid, but it's actually still a lot of fun. 
that's that's why everyone likes it so much. It's like actually engaging in a way that literally no other part of this entire video game experience is. No, I'm talking about the game in general. Like, I really did enjoy raising overpowered monsters, even if the plot was absolutely uh, stupid. Granted, I only I stopped after maybe a few hours into the game, so I don't know if it it got to like the gameplay got any worse, but. Yeah, well, raising... If you enjoy raising broken monsters, it actually gets better. Yeah, raising the monsters is, is the only... Uh, is is pretty much the only thing in the game that goes somewhere that isn't DLC. Although you do need DLC in order to actually use the monsters that you've raised to this point of ridiculousness, so... Yeah, because the, only the DLC bosses are the ones that can actually stand up for more than 10 seconds. Yeah. But yeah, you can. It, it it is entertaining to see how much certain monsters can utterly break things. But yeah, there's no there's no real point in having stuff that broken other than to do the DLC. I mean, while I while I wouldn't say that games should cater towards the uh, the hardcore guy who actually puts all the time into developing overpowered monsters, well. I kind of feel like they made it a little bit too accessible for people who had no idea what they were doing. I don't know. It's, it's, a, it's an idea with some merit. At the same time, there are also some like really stupidly obtuse aspects to the monster system that like nobody would ever figure out. Oh yeah, like the whole deal with infusion? Yeah, in infusion and transferring abilities and like the red and yellow locks and how to get rid of certain abilities. Like, I remember there was this GameFAQ thread with this guy who was like, I will fix your monster builds and you tell him what you have and what you want and he'll just come up with this like 50,000 step thing of, oh, you got to infuse this and this and this and then raise this to, to level this and then infuse it with that and then infuse it with this thing and then raise that thing to level that. I'm like, how the hell did he do that? Magic. Savants, man. There are, it turns out, a very few things that you can do in this DLC other than play an amazing card slash clock game. Yeah, um, even me and my propensity to literally do anything other than what is expected. Um, this game was just so good that I couldn't put it down. So... As it turns out, like my third playthrough, and I was just kind of screwing around, and I realized, wait, can I actually go out of the casino? And then I realized, yes, you can. You can actually run around. And I'm just like, oh, this is kind of novel. You can't do go into the Chocobo Racing place. Uh, but what you can do is you can go into um, the Fragment Mystic Lady that gives you skills. Um, and who's in there is Chocolina, and she decides to uh, berate Saz for not recognize recognizing her because she, you know, she's totally she's totally met him by this point. Oh yeah, I mean everybody knows Chocolina. Yeah, she's famous. She's famous across the literally all of reality. But she gives him a quest to bring back Chocobo chicks that have lost their way. And then you do that, and she gives you fortune medals. You know, because we didn't hate Chocolina enough, she had to actually give us a literal fetch quest in the middle of a purpose-built DLC that has an amazing game that we can play instead of doing fetch quests. Mm -hmm. And at the end of it all, she gives you her origin story. Yeah, um, let's just, you know, we're just gonna leave it at that. I'm gonna rec I'm gonna record that separately just so everybody can really see what it's about. It's quite something. Frankly, I was astounded that it wasn't included in this video. Oh well. I'm not, because it took me so long to figure out you could do it. Yeah, my excuse is that I forgot you could even leave the casino, and so I didn't even know that quest existed. I can sympathize with one having so much fun playing Chronobine that they totally forget about everything else. It's a common affliction. Gambling is bad. Uh, earlier we were talking about an irritating guy in glasses. Is that Anthony? No. His name's Simon. 
yeah, no, si Simon is the fucker that everybody hates. But Anthony is not... He's not much better. Yeah. I don't know. No, Simon will give you a run for your many and occasionally run the table. Man. Well, that's all great. Don't we, don't we actually have enough to win it? Didn't you say it was like 30... 30,000? 30, it, it, no, it, it's 30... Uh, it's 30 fortune medals, I believe. Oh. Like, right now we have, I think, 25. I thought it was just like a massing amount of money. No, 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 it's not coins. It's it's fortune medals. It's fortune medals you need. Right, because the coins are actually good for something. Not really much. But I've been over this before. It's not like this DLC isn't weighed down with the typical quotient of Final Fantasy XIII to arbitrary bullshit. But there is the undeniable fact that underneath all that bullshit, there is a really, really great game. And you can actually just forget about the bullshit. A lot of games like people say, oh, underneath the bullshit there's this thing that you can enjoy. Too often the thing that you can enjoy is inseparable from the bullshit. But no, this one you can actually legit straight up ignore the bullshit and just play Chronobind as a game. And it's actually fun! In the console version, I... I think Arctix mentioned to me earlier a while ago that they uh, either put a patch in that you can mod the game with or whatever, but in the console version, um, at least on PS3, uh, you can axe as soon as you leave New Bodom for the first time, you can go to the DLC. Like as soon as you as soon as you unlock it. If you haven't purchased, you can go straight there. So you can just do the prerequisite couple bosses and go straight and play Chronobind. Which is also one of the one of the ways to really break the game early. Because you can make a whole shit ton of money. That, well, no, for other reasons. Yeah, there are other reasons that we will see at the end of the DLC why you'd want to do that. I don't doubt it. It's kind of sad that, like, the DLC as a whole is just way better, a way better game than the main actual game. It's kind, of, it's kind of true of all of all of the DLCs. I mean, this this game, ob this one obviously has Chronobine, so that's that pretty much decides straight away. The Colosseum stuff, which is like, hey, an actual application of this game's battle system with like difficult battles that your stupid monsters won't completely walk all over. I mean, if anything, it goes a bit too far in the other direction. And also the, uh, you know, the references. Oh yes, it's also, you know, the fan service DLC. And we're not talking outfits. No, oh, yeah, there's any excuse to trot out Gilgamesh again. Yeah, no, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that, that stuff in another video, because that's coming up soon too. I want to I wanna go on a brief tangent here. Um, if they don't have Gilgamesh in Kingdom Hearts 3, I'm going to be pissed. It seems likely at this point. You'd, you'd think you'd think if Gilgamesh was gonna show up in any other Square Enix property, it would be Kingdom Hearts, since that's the thing that Square Enix characters show up in. Well, that and that's kind of a thing that Gilgamesh does. He literally just travels wherever the hell he wants. He wants interesting weapons, and hey, Keyblades are dumb, but they're kind of interesting. Gilgamesh would be all over Keyblades. They are interestingly dumb. They're not, they're not even like regular JRPG sword dumb. They're actually just... Jesus Christ, you are using a key like a sword. I can, I'll can. i never forget the uh, Final Fantasy Tactics Advance 2 sword. Oh my god. Well, Luso's outfit in general is just a complete train wreck. Every single thing about Luso is just... The sword brings it over the top. Like, you, you can take a look at his outfit, and it's like, okay, that has Nomura written all over it. Then you look at the sword, and it's like, oh, this is some, this is on a higher plane of existence. It, it is true that the sword does elevate things. But, ugh. I don't know what the hell they were even going for. I mean, 
I, th I don't know what was, what was... What the hell was the mistake that they made? Because what the hell could they have been going for that any kind of mistake that any human could make would result in what we got? I mean, it's not, it's not even where did it go wrong. What were they going for? They weren't really going for anything because they wanted to appease Nomura because he would probably get them fired if they disagreed with him. Wait, was was A2 even a Nomura game? I think by this point he was basically de facto character designer. I mean, that's that's pretty much what he's being relegated to now because he got booted the hell off of 15 because he was fucking everything up. So now he's just gone to work on Kingdom Hearts and they've they've accomplished a couple of little proof of concept things. So yeah, he's basically just doing character design. Like, yeah, you know, I I'd, I'd like I'd like to believe that he's a little bit in the in the doghouse for having messed everything up. He's like the John he's like the John Romero of Japan. A surprisingly apt comparison. You, you just can't put him in charge. You can't put him in charge of F anything. He works much better as a uh, designer slash, you know, conceptualist. I suppose. With actual talent working to bring it to life. I cannot find any mention of Tetsuya Nomura on A2's Wikipedia page. Yeah. So yeah. So so we can't. Yeah. Yeah. We can't even blame Nomura. Somebody else actively designed that. Somebody... Maybe somebody just decided, I'm going to design something even more ridiculous than that. Somebody probably started probably started as like a bet in a bar one day and somebody actually took it seriously. It's like, I bet you can't so design something more ridiculous than numerous characters. Oh, really? What I, what, I, what I can't find on this page is any actual mention of who it actually was. I mean, there's there's various credits. But we, we got the uh, developer, publisher, director, producer, artist. Closest thing. But I don't recognize most of these names. So... I got nothing. I'm sure somebody will... somebody is probably already shouting at their screen saying, it was this guy. So just post it in the thread and be done with it, will ya? Also, just want to quickly point out that right there, that was an Ace Beats King, even though there was there was no high card. So yeah, so Ace does beat King by default. Ace is one of those weird cards in card games that either counts as low or high depending on the situation. Oh yeah, card games do weird things with Aces sometimes. We receive a fortune medal as a blessing of the goddess. Yeah, occasionally the game just gives you fortune medals for just fucking nothing, who knows. Ah, the Mario Party principle. Anyway, yeah, we now have enough fortune medals, so we get dodge back. And apparently we get to own space time. Now Saz has become the DM. So why, so why isn't Saz the one going through history and challenging history's possibilities? Well, you see, there is also a cost. Because we have accumulated so much luck and made things go our way, we have eliminated a possibility. Um... I'm just gonna go with this. You took the... In, uh, what is it, like, you took the luck from a parallel universe and destroyed it or something? I was going to say that was that was the exact same clip of Dodge saying "Daddy" as they used in the ending of Thirteen. I mean, literally the exact same clip. And literally every other time that Dodge is on screen because that's the only thing he ever says. Just about, yeah. But why? It's a it's a good way to save money because nobody really cares or notices, except for Duel. Mm. Well, you notice. I don't know if you care. I just, I just find it intriguing that they were that lazy, or that redundant, that they recorded the exact same line in the same way twice. Neither possibility is very flattering to them. It's money. You remember money, right? 
Oh, but you see, this is special because every coin is coming up tails. Saz ruined gambling forever. Right, because he removed the possibility that they can come up heads because of how lucky he is. That, that possibility has just disappeared. I'm going to go ahead and pretend that that makes sense in any possible convoluted chronological causality. The possibility of change has disappeared. I... That's what these coins are telling you. I got nothing. Eventually, it will become apparent in everything around you. How this I mean... This will make gambling quite boring. This could be... Yeah, like a billion other things in this game, this could be a hook for an actual interesting thing. I thought it was a reference to uh, the whole Valhalla taking over everything and that. I don't know, I mean, it's, it's supposed to be implied that Sars did this by winning so much at gambling that he now, he literally won all the gambling. Now no more gambling can be won because Sars won all the gambling. That's an interesting proposition. Uh, that's kind of amusing. I mean, that's, that's pretty much the closest that I can get to making this make sense. What do you plan to do? If you try and extrapolate from that any more, then you basically end up with Fortune from MGS2 or something. Yeah, but that turned out to be bullshit too. I mean, you know, as, a, as a character concept, not like a, as an actual, oh hey, I guess that's how it turned out in the plot. Yeah, I understand what you're saying. Although, you know, knowing, knowing what I know about Revolver Ocelot, I wouldn't put it past him to have his claws in, in other entire dimensions. Just so he could turn around later and say, Ha! It was me. All along. Actually, that would be a pretty interesting uh, character concept, uh, gameplay-wise, for like a guest character. Like, uh, a character with infinite luck. Oh wait, but hey, guess what? Saws is so fucking lucky that he made it come up heads anyway. But it's not like the... I swear the head was on that was the other head. That's the Chocobo head. That's the third option. He managed to win the gambling even when there was no gambling left to win. He made some more gambling so he could win it. So... Sounds is now the only person left on the face of the earth who can win at gambling. Or even gamble in the first place. At least the only person in serendipity. Hmm. So... At the end of this, everything is exactly the same as it was at the start of this. Except what's... we just got Saz! He's joined our party! He is a monster! Is he a synergist? He is, in fact, a synergist. He's a very good synergist, too. He is extremely good. Yeah, I guess... I guess anything that you can get from a DLC has to, like, be very good, otherwise... How would they convince anyone to pay for it? Oh, cynicism.